On this channel especially, I always go about like how to make samples, but sometimes it's just better to learn it how not to do it. So today I'm gonna explain y'all how not to make samples. I think this is gonna be a pretty interesting type of way to explain how to make samples and how to better your loops. So without further ado, let's hop straight into the, I was gonna say tutorial, but it's an explanation. So let's, let's dive straight into the explanation. Number one, not having a lot of variation. When you're making loops, it's crucial, but like, I mean, crucial, crucial to make sure you have an A section and you have a B section. Because when the person is using your loop, you know, it's a session where it's just, everything needs to go fast. And sometimes the producer will just use that part of the preview because there's no time to chop it up and shit. There's no time for that. So it's just dragging it in, using the preview and that's it. So when that happens, you need to make sure that the producer that is flipping your loop has a lot of variation to work with. So if you just have one melody and that's it in there, it's not gonna be okay. But if you have an intro section in there, if you have a chorus section and a verse section in there, it's gonna be way cooler. And especially if you have some type of A section and a B section, like I mentioned earlier. Just, you know, some other vibe. It's, it's something that Palace does. He's an amazing producer and he blew up because of his samples. And he joined 808 Mafia because of his samples. And if 808 Mafia likes your samples, you know, their, their bank account is ding, ding, ding. Generally, this is something that you should look out to have enough variation in your samples. This leads me to my next point. There are a lot of people out there that are just taking what they see is successful. For instance, Palace is really, is an, is an amazing example of this. He has a very specific style of making loops, which he used an analog and all that type of gear. And people immediately started copying it. And I don't know if you watch the Producer Grind podcast, but they really went fishing into his method and to the analog gear he uses but he really doesn't want to speak up on it. That's not what you should be looking for. You should be looking for your own way, specific way of making loops. Because you can go chase someone's technique, but it's always going to be their technique. You just need to go out there, really create your own technique and create your own style. Don't be like Palace and detune your bells because he's hard and known for that. Make sure you find your thing, which you're going to be known for in a few years, months, or weeks, maybe. Don't be nobody else, be you and only you mimicking yeah it works sometimes you feel me but it gets you but so far point three is a i feel like is a is a really overlooked one it's not using plugs bells the same sounds over and over but use textures make them make you know everybody knows that finisher micro uh plugin that free plugin which has a infinity effect and really automating effects, using accents, reversing accents, using things that are not like, just don't open Omnisphere and start clicking in some notes, you feel me? Just be way more original, start using textures, start, try to make a, I don't know, try to make a loop with one note. That's gonna force you to make something crazy, you know? If, if you wanna make it compl real complicated, then you go and, and try textures, try accents, try everything you got, but just, Please don't go and, and make one chord melodies and, and that's just it. Try something different, bro. It really ain't that hard. Then step four. A lot of people are failing to use rare effects, bro. There are a lot of people that just, they use the, like I said, they detune the bells or something. That's something Palace already did. So he's known for that. Choose your own thing. Go out there, explore. With, uh, go explore with analog gear. Do things that other people just don't do. You know, go buy a pedal, a guitar pedal. Link it up to your interface. Go route your melodies through that. I don't know, find some rare ass plugin with rare ass effects in it and automate some effects. Just use rare effects. Everybody is tired of using the same effects over and over again. You know, everybody has heard RC RC20. I'm, I'm just so tired of that. You know, I added RC20 with this, added some wobble. It's cool, it sounds cool, it's true. I don't wanna hear vintage sound for the rest of my life, bro. <laughs> and then the last one, which is probably the most important one, don't be afraid to step out of your normal basic instruments, go to shit, that's not okay. Just go find some new sounds. If you're using plugins, try to use one shots. One shots, they're, 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 you know, they're not easy to sound natural and shit, but if you combine that and use that as 
you know, an easy instrument to glide, for instance. One shots are super easy to glide with. So if you use that in combination with something you use always, for instance, if you're a heavy Omnisphere user, use Omnisphere in combination with some one shots. That's gonna give you some real different results, which is gonna result in a real different result of a sample. So hey, I hope these tips helped you out. I hope this concept is interesting